Well, the January transfer window has closed, and since then we have managed to start turning form around a little bit with better performances and results. But some of the players are still unhappy about some of the decisions that I have been making regarding player sales. And on top of all of that, we still have the FA Cup fifth round to come, so our season kind of hinges on this episode. Hello and welcome back to the FM24 Early Access Save, episode 5 with Everton. My name is Craig and coming up on today's episode we have an away match in the Premier League against Fulham and also away against Crystal Palace but in the FA Cup 5th round. Like I said, this season could quite hinge on if we are able to progress in the FA Cup which is our only chance of any silverware if we're going to win anything. Now, since you were last with me, like I said, we've been able to start turning the form around a little bit after the Manchester United game that you see up here, that was after the Burnley match from the last episode. Yes, we did get thrashed by Man U at Old Trafford. What a shock. But then we started to turn it around with a 2-2 draw against Bournemouth, as disappointing as that was. 4-0 thumping of Sheffield United and a actually quite disappointing 2-2 draw at home against Tottenham. A match we actually controlled until this equaliser. This horrendous equaliser that I'm about to show you now. So you can see here the ball is being played back to Jordan Pickford and just a horrible pass for the border to score. It just gets worse every single time I see it to be honest. But it was a poor pass by Jordan Pickford. Uh, he should pass it into Tar no, it was Branthwaite instead of Godfrey. It does play into the fact that certain players are unhappy with some decisions that I've made. Jordan Pickford is one of them. He's un he's still unhappy at the sale of our star player, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. As is six other players. And that is James Tarkovsky, Deli Ali, Jared Branthwaite, Abdullah Dukore, Idrissa Gwayi, and Amadou Onana. Now, Deli Ali, I don't really care much about. He's not playing for me much anymore. If ever, he'll be gone at the end of the season. But for everyone else, they're performing okay, but Jordan Pickford's just doing silly little mistakes now. Despite the fact we have got in a striker, remember, uh, Giovanni, uh, what's his surname again? Simeone, how am I forgetting? Uh, he has been scoring goals though now. He's still not the top scorer, but he has bagged six goals in six games, the Argentinian striker. He's bagged five from five in the league, one in the cup as well after coming on as a substitute. And he would be starting today if he didn't pick up a knock. In fact, we don't actually have a starting recognized striker as you are going to find out but before uh, we do I'll just quickly show you the Premier League table just how it looks we're sitting in ninth place I do consider the fact that we have dropped four points against Bournemouth and Tottenham we actually shouldn't have we put we performed spectacularly in both games but just could not put the teams away so we would be much closer to seventh but it is what it is this team is still having to bed in with each other to a certain extent and I'm hoping that we might be able to get over that hump today even though we don't actually have a recognized striker that's because Vardy and Beto are both out for or well, Beto's out for another eight days Vardy's out for another up to another three weeks Simeone will be back for the Palace game so that's some good news uh, Pierre Kalulu our centre-back as well who we bought in January uh, he's also picked up an injury so he's going to be out for up to eight days so it's unlikely we will see him against Crystal Palace. That's two episodes in a row. You're not going to be seeing him due to injury. And speaking of transfers, actually, we did make one more and sell one more player as well. Jean Virginia has gone to Hellas Verona in, I believe it's Syria? Yeah, Syria, for only £195,000, which is much less than what he should have commanded, but we were just desperate to get rid of him because I feel that we have got an upgrade on him in Zach Steffen. 28-year-old American goalkeeper from Manchester City. Only two-star current ability. He'll do until we can get to the summer and hopefully find a better goalkeeper to challenge Jordan Pickford because that's exactly what we need. He started one game against Bournemouth because Pickford had the flu. But Pickford is going to be back in goal for us from now on as long as he's fit. So he's in goal with Mikalenko, Branthwaite, Godfrey and Coleman as the back four. Coleman is in for Patterson to try and give him some more game time. Uh, Gwaii at the base of the midfield, Dewsbury Hall and Garner in the midfield, Dan Juma and McNeil uh, on the wings with Angel Correa as the man up front. He normally does play on the wings and he has been 
for the last few games, but again, we don't have a recognised striker. So we need Correa to go up front and hopefully, maybe bag one or two goals. Okay, an away game against relegated, relegated, relegation threatened Fulham. Of course, they've got their own issues at the moment, but we're looking to try and pick up uh, even more points, which will not only get us over the 40 point barrier this season, which is what Everton will be aiming for in real life anyway, but also hopefully have a crack at securing top 10 in the league as Jewsby. Oh, Jewsby Hall does put it in the back of the net, and that one there is no chance of offside, Jewsbury Hall coming in from deep and has bagged a goal just about, I thought he was denied by one of the defenders, let's just have a look at this again, beautiful flick on there from Correa and that's where I thought Jewsbury Hall got stopped but he just about kept hold of the ball, sticks in the back of the net, an early goal, 1-0 up, that's what we're looking for, just get ourselves a good foothold in the game and Jewsbury Hall with a free kick not far outside the area here. Oh, he goes for the shot and it hits the bar. I thought he was looking to put it in the area, but he goes for the spectacular. Fair enough. You know, he's clearly feeling it at the moment. Obviously, one goal to his name already. My God, why are some of my players anxious already? What's going on there? Uh, except for Dan Juma and Correa, both pleased or confident. Whichever one. Mikolenko having the ball there. Mikolenko is more than likely going to be gone. Uh, did mention at the beginning he was upset with the fact he wasn't allowed to join Arsenal and then I supposedly broke a lot of promises to him which I guess I did but he wanted to go out it he had from Saudi Arabia have made a 22 million pound bid for him which means he is going to be gone as Correa not skies but just drags an awful effort wide he should have done much much better from there but Mikolenko will be on his way out hopefully and that's at the end of the season because I actually don't know when the Saudi Pro League have their um, transfer window deadline. I mean, I tried to look it up on Google, but couldn't find anything. It was just talking about the summer one instead, which we all know about. And that is indeed 1-0 at half time. Not much else happened in that half, thankfully. Um, we're ahead on the score sheets. We deserve to be ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Just keep them inspired. Let's see if we can finish it off in the second half. This league season has been very, very patchy. It's been a mixture of wins, draws and losses. I know that sounds very obvious, but for Everton, it's the definition of being mid-table as Correa is here. Correa sticks one in the back of the net. It's his second goal for the club. He did score against, was it Bournemouth? No, I think it was against Tottenham or Sheffield United. It was one of those two. Sheffield United, I think it was against. He had his first goal for us. And Correa with his first goal as a striker. It's good to know that he can play up front in off the post, actually. Nice finish. Nice, nice finish. But that's something that we needed to see from him today. Because obviously, again, we have no recognised striker. In fact, it's not even on the bench. I've decided to just keep Simeone off. And he'll be back for the game against uh, Crystal Palace in the league. As we're just going to make a quick substitution here. Patterson is going to come on for Seamus Coleman at right back. Coleman just giving a little more time to at right back because that's what he's asked for and I'm, actually I made a promise to him to give him more game time as well so if anything it was just to fulfill that. I know he'll more than likely be gone at the end of the season but I just can't afford any more players to be upset with me. Uh, Gomez is gonna actually... Yeah you know what we'll bring him on for Mikolenko. Mikolenko can have a break. Gomez needs some match fitness anyway. Uh, James Garner is going to go off for Campana. Let's give Campana a game. Decore, we'll save him for the cup match, hopefully. And Onana or Harrison. You know what, actually, Harrison's going to come on. Harrison can go on for Dan Juma. Switch with McNeil. I don't know why somebody is banging um, in the garden uh, outside my window. Not in my garden, thankfully, but just uh, in general. A lot of uh, banging with a hammer out there. Don't know what's going on. Correa on the ball here. And uh, Co uh, Campano couldn't get onto the ball there. Gomez steaming through. Oh, he did have a shot on target. That was very, very close. Nicely done. Nicely done. Right, I was going to say... Um, I was going to put on the game management stuff. But instead... In fact, we'll just do it now. Screw it. I know there's a highlight on. But with 89 minutes gone... We should be looking to hopefully wrap up, uh, just wind down the game 
a little bit. There is former Everton player Alex Iwobi. Well, won there by a uh, Gwei, who goes under the name Ghana for some reason. I, I don't know why. I never actually found out why. Correa. Into McNeil. Go on. Finish it, McNeil. Yes, there you go. McNeil finishes it. And a possible offside. Ref, can you just allow it? We could do with a big victory. Oh, the goal's been awarded. Hey, very good. And Dwight McNeil gets his goal. Oh, we do get a replay of it. Nice run through from him from the left wing. That is supposedly his best side, but he rarely shows it this season. He, I have used the player targets on him for him to get a match rating of 7.2 or above. And he'll be able to stay as a regular starter. He hasn't done that so far. And apparently, as he has shown us onside, apparently he's very unhappy at me for not giving him the opportunity on his favoured side. I don't know what you want me to do. Dan Juma has got that nailed down on the left-hand side. I know he's a lone player, but still, you haven't shown me why. You deserve it, Sir Dwight McNeil. Good goal from him, though. And it gets us to the 40-point mark after a 3-0 victory away at Fulham. Not only are we secure in the Premier League for another season at least, but we still have a chance to finish in the top 10. Now, let's go and see if we can have ourselves a nice little cup run as well away against Crystal Palace. Right, so I was mentioning before about how some of the players weren't very happy about some of the decisions that I've been making, such as playing time or the sale of Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, it's this screen which I think is a big part of the reason why we're still quite in form, out of form for large parts. So unhappy internally, players uh, supporting each other and complaining to teammates about the sale of Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Kin and Dewsbury Hall is just unhappy publicly now. Wow, playing in weak role. Wow. Wow. I mean, he's been playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And the promise that I made to him when we signed him, where is it? We'll use him in preferred position as a central midfielder with a box-to-box -box midfielder role. We succeeded, yet he's unhappy. This is why I don't do a long-term save um, with the early access or the beta of FM. Because otherwise, otherwise we're just going to have stuff like this long term and I'd rather wait for the game to be fully patched before actually beginning a save that's going to go for a long time. Pickford has got a low morale as well, he's one of those complaining about Calvert-Lewin being sold. But This is going to be the 11 that we are going to be sending out for the cup game away at Crystal Palace. Pickford is in goal, back four of Mikolenko, Branthwaite, Tarkovsky and Patterson. Uh, ben Godfrey, he's on, yeah, he's on the bench actually, should we be playing him? Probably playing him for this match. Uh, I'm going to play him instead of Tarkovsky. Uh, Onana at the base of the midfield. Dewsbury Hall and Garner. Actually, no. Where is Decore? Decore is going to come in for this one. He's going to come in alongside Garner in midfield. McNeil and Correa on the wings with Simeone as the striker up front. He's back from injury. Uh, Dan Juma picked up a knock in training. So that's why McNeil is going to be starting. And also it's probably just as well. He's starting after his goal in the last match. Let's see if he can get himself above that 7.2 match rating that I was talking about in the last match. Other than that, so we're aiming to keep on going in the FA Cup and that looks scarily accurate to Chris, uh, sorry, to Selhurst Park, which is Crystal Palace's home in real life. Yeah, South London looking a lot better in this universe than in real life, no offence to those south of the river. Right, first highlight and it is us with the ball, Patterson. Oh, he is back in ahead of Coleman for this match for a cup match. I think it's better to play Patterson than Coleman for this one. Uh, Mikolenko with a poor pass originally. He just about keeps hold of it. There is Simeon. Oh, just over the bar. Simeon is about 5 foot 10, 5 11. But he's really, really good in the air. He's got a 16 jumping reach, I think, which is out of 20. For those not in the know. But he's very, very good at corners. As a short corner is played, there is... Oh, oh my God! Oh my god, what a goal. Corner played low to Garner, who lays off first time to Correa, who lays off first time with a beautiful effort into the far corner. No keeper was stopping that. That was a thing of beauty. That's a goal that would should win any game, quite frankly. Beautiful ball by Simeone over to McNeil on the left-hand side. Decore, Simeone, but it is over. The bar is just scooped over. He had two defenders in his way, so I can kind of understand what he was going for. Oh, that career effort, though. Not even an effort. It was a goal. Absolutely beautiful. 
Right, Palace have the ball going forward here. Can someone close him down, please? Oh my gosh, that hit the bar aside the post. This is why you should really be closing players down, actually. Much more often. Let's see if that does anything. Um, did it do much when you tell players to press much more often in FM23? I mean, players are still getting shots off anyway from out wide. That's not out wide, from far out. But, yeah, I, I just feel that we need to be closing down a lot, a lot more than we actually are. As by the match momentum, Crystal Palace getting a bit more momentum but we're trying to push back as much as possible just before half time we're actually over the allotted time at the end of the first half would really like to oh good save by Pickford there that was a fantastic stop just to deny Palace just before half time but they have a corner the referee should have blown the whistle a long time ago and it is just about cleared and we see ourselves in 1-0 at half time just about deserved but I do feel that we're going to need to wrap this game up as soon as possible with a second goal. Ball played out to Correa on the right-hand side. And Garner with the first-time effort. He's trying to do a reverse of what Correa has tried to, uh, did for us earlier. It was actually a corner, so someone made a save or a block. Branthwaite couldn't quite get to it. McNeil with the ball again. And Ayu uh, gets there before. Who was that? Was that Garner again? Considering he was in the same place last time, I'm going to assume that was James Garner. I have no idea. Onana wins the ball back there to Kore. Into Ghana. Play over to Correa. Oh, never mind. He's got Simeone. Oh, Simeone dragged it. Oh, he just had to get that on target. Chances are that would have been in the back of the net. But not to be on this occasion as we hit the hour mark. So I'm starting to think of some substitutions. Just to keep things a little bit fresh. In particular, I'm looking at Onana, actually. Uh, the base of the midfield. Ducore, oh no, sorry, that's, oh sorry, that's Crystal Palace's version. There's, there's more than one Ducore? Interesting, um, I didn't actually know that. Uh, Gwei is going to go on for Ghana, so Onana will stay on, he'll go into that central midfield role. And Mikalenko is going to go off, he's tired, so Sergio Gomez is going to go on at left back. And Correa is actually knackered, so what we're going to do, Jack Harrison is going to go on. I know Correa is one of our better players, but I don't really want to wear him out too much. Uh, Branthwaite may come on for uh, Tarkovsky. No, sorry, he'll go off for Tarkovsky. My apologies. It was Branthwaite who actually started. Beautiful ball there. Oh, beautiful football there. McNeil. Oh, it deserved a goal. It really did deserve a goal. Simeone playing very deep. McNeil again. Lost the ball. It's okay. I think we have a couple of substitutions left. Yeah, we do. So Jose Campana is going to come on for Onana. And Godfrey will go over to right back. Don't know why my hand up was here. Sorry. Uh, it's probably in the camera shot. Tarkovsky is going to come on for uh, Patterson. So it'll be Branthway who will actually stay on. Godfrey over to right back. I was wondering what was happening there. Crikey. Uh, we're just going to go to a standard line. Low block line of engagement. Just to... Try and see things down a little bit as we hit the 90th minute. Game management now. Game management. Hold the nerves. Hold the nerves. Put everything on. Or at least most of it. I don't think I've been to a low block in this FM yet. So I don't know if it really works that well. It's hopefully well, it's well enough. We went just over time. But we have got ourselves into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Excellent results. Nervy, but we will take it. We will take it. How did the other quarterfinal games go? So, Brentford beat Arsenal. Wow. Brighton beat Liverpool. Leicester, who are in the championship, they beat Carlisle. We beat Palace, of course. City smashed Nottingham Forest, so they're still in. Yikes. Preston beat Stevenage. Newcastle are still in. They beat West Ham. And Norwich beat Wolves. That's actually a shock as well. Okay. So, FA Cup-wise, uh, looking okay at the moment. We get a little bit more prize money. Excellent. Finances, looking decent. Transfer budget, I will want to spend that before the end of the season. We get 26.6 million minimum for next season. Hopefully a little bit more. But otherwise, the season rumbles on. We will be back for the FA Cup quarter-final, which is displaced in the Man City game. And then, depending what happens there, we'll either go 
well, if we, depending who we draw, which would be a nice little surprise for the next round, uh, sorry, for the next episode, we will hopefully have a cup episode coming up for you next time. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss upcoming episodes of the FM24 Early Access and our ongoing FA Cup run. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for your support on the series so far. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.